take a minute to talk to you all about something very serious. Once every hour, someone is involved in an internet scam. That man is Michael Scott. <laughs> it's a big scary world out there with a lot of unscrupulous folks who are out to make a quick buck at someone else's expense. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In this installment, we're counting down our picks for the five most interesting tidbits of information about the art of the put on. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se, it's... For this list, we'll be looking into the shady world of the con, ranging from old school pyramid schemes to cases of hidden identity, as well as the darkest recesses of cybercrime. Number five, Western Union is a popular choice for con artists. Western Union is pretty much synonymous with sending money to anyone anywhere in the world. But whether they're perpetrating a lottery scam, a fake emergency, or a good old-fashioned long con with a catfish twist, scammers love wire transfers because they are fast and relatively untraceable. Who the hell are you? Western Union! Not only will grifters use these services as a means to an end, they'll sometimes even dupe the Western Union offices themselves. Look, just, uh... Just wire it to Western Union in uh, Oklahoma City, okay? One particularly popular scam is for a con artist to call a place of business with a Western Union license and pretend to be from the business's home office or help desk. But why go to all that trouble just for 500 bucks? I don't know why you would, but you could. The caller then convinces the employee of that business to process a fraudulent transaction to a waiting accomplice, getting away with thousands of dollars in the process. So now I get to call my pregnant wife and have her drive all the way back to Western Union, start this whole process all over again, send it to the correct name, and we'll be good. Absolutely. Great. Number four, several televangelists are convicted con artists. You can't say I don't make this stuff up just five seconds after you said the words Manda Kasabasanda. Now we can't say all televangelists are charlatans, but the movie Leap of Faith, where Steve Martin plays a grifting miracle healer, was inspired by the well-documented trickery that some televangelists employed. Look, I run a show here. It's a lot of smoke and noise and it's strictly for the suckers. I've been pulling one kind of scam or another since I was your age. Several of them rose to prominence in the 1980s, and foremost among them were the husband and wife team of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. The couple were accused of using donations to their ministry to finance a lavish personal lifestyle. I, I think that there was many in the media who wanted to get a minister, a well-known minister. I think it's been like a circuit. Jim Baker was eventually imprisoned for fraud, but not before rape allegations from church secretary Jessica Hahn ruined his reputation. The Bakers had given us complete access to their home, and the only condition was that we not bring up the subject of Jessica Hahn. Other televangelists have suffered similar fates, including Texas-based preacher W.V. Grant, who was sentenced to 16 months in prison for tax evasion. As Slate Magazine pointed out a little while ago, Grant and Baker both revived their television ministries after they were released from prison. Friend, this is Pastor Evangelist W.V. Grant. I pastor Eagles Nest Cathedral in Dallas, Texas. I'm there every Sunday morning. The address is on the screen. I hope you can come and be with us real soon. Number three. Adam West unwittingly played a role in a prolific scam. What does it mean, though? Right, Commissioner, there's the problem. Oh no, not TV's Batman and Mayor of Quahog, Rhode Island. Man, could have fooled me. Are you afraid of the dark? I thought we had an understanding that the dark was off limits. This press conference is over. I totally would have invested in an EasyLink public internet kiosk that offers cashless ATMs and, uh, uh telegrams. The fascinating story behind the scam was brought to light in a 2012 post on the official AARP website by a former con artist and EasyLink associate who was imprisoned for conspiracy to commit mail fraud in 2006. He detailed how having a public persona was crucial to give the air of legitimacy. And so they hired Adam West, who presumably had no idea that the business was a scam that built thousands from hopeful investors every day. The Riddler contrives his plots like artichokes. You have to strip off spiny leaves to reach the heart. The scheme was so successful, it reportedly brought in $17 million from 700 different victims in an eight month span. Number two, Charles Ponzi almost invented the yellow pages. The term Ponzi scheme is likely to ring a bell, 
It's the sort of scam where money from investors is used to pay off the debts owed to earlier investors, which is also known as robbing Peter to pay Paul. In 1918, Italian immigrant Charles Ponzi started a scam involving international reply coupons and their exchange rate across the world postal market, eventually raking in over $250,000 a day in returns. The cash flow didn't last forever, of course, and Ponzi's scheme would eventually be discovered by both authorities and angry investors with the unscrupulous yet convincing Italian serving prison time in 1920 for his efforts. One of the strangest aspects of Ponzi's story, however, is that only two years earlier, a newly married and struggling Ponzi attempted to convince businesses to invest in an advertised listing to be sent to other businesses who were in search of service. Outside, all you need is the yellow pages. Hell, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Basically, what the Yellow Pages did for many decades with a lot of success. This early version of the Yellow Pages didn't catch on, however, and Ponzi's legitimate business dreams were crushed. Number one, Nigerian print scams date back to the 16th century. Can you lose a lot of money on that other investment, the one from the email? You know what, Toby? When the son of the deposed king of Nigeria emails you directly asking for help, you help. They're one of the earliest examples of cybercrime on the internet. They're often referred to as 419 scams, a reference to the criminal code for fraud in Nigeria, which is where many of these con artists commonly, and often falsely, claim residence. He's supporting about 20 Nigerian princesses. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Forgive me for caring. The actual history behind these 419 scams dates back to the 16th century, however, in what was known as the Spanish prisoner scam. In these person-to-person -person scams, the con artist usually poses as a distant, wealthy relative of the victim and claims that he's, say, being held prisoner and needs a sum of money to, say, bribe a guard, at which point he will pay back the money tenfold or twentyfold or hundredfold. Most of us probably think of these scams as being email-based, but this advanced fee scam was going strong for hundreds of years before anyone ever dreamed of the electronic telegram. I never carried half that stuff in my old belt. So, what did you learn about the art of the con? Ah, courtesy of Western okay, Union, okay. huh? Have you ever been fooled by a Nigerian prince? For more $17 million top 10s and cashless ATM top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. This sounds like a get-rich-quick scheme. Yes, thank you. You will get rich quick. We all will.